Hi, yeah, I'm a senior data scientist at Bay, and I'm, I will present a machine learning approach for image scoring for our particular use case, uh, paid, um, paid internet marketing. Um, so in the first uh, part of my presentation, I will talk who we are and, and what we do and uh, why we care about image quality. And then I will talk how uh, we, what is intuition for image quality definition, what it is. And uh, then I will talk about our particular use case, uh, advertising uh, in eBay partner network, EPN. Uh, in the second part, I will talk about implementation. And implementation typically consists of uh, several stages. One is uh, data collection for supervised learning. Then the, the learning itself, so I will talk about the models, and I will show in two examples of uh, deep learning models we implemented. Then um, uh, I will show exam one of example of image post-processing, and then I, I will uh, talk a little bit about our infrastructure. Um, so who we are? Um, eBay is a, um, eBay Inc. is a global commerce leader. It was founded in 1995. It consists of eBay Marketplace, StubHub, and Classified uh, platform. Uh, eBay has 183 million of active buyers. It has 190 markets. It has uh, millions of sellers and billions of e items, of listings. 80% um, of our, our items are new, and even though we still have uh, auction based. No, no. Um, in terms of uh, inventory, um, uh, eBay has um, thousands of item categories. So we have uh, billions of items in thousands of categories. For example, we have cars, we have phone cases, we have luxury handbags, but we also have uh, very specific things such as Halloween costumes for cats. <laughs> and um, so if something exists, it probably can be found in eBay. And um, so as I said, 80% of the, our items are new um, and uh, uh, many of our uh, uh, sellers are professional sellers. And while I was talking, um, uh, a watch was sold on the, on the US and uh, a mica product was sold on eBay UK. So the velocity and the scale is massive. So we have um, millions, billions of uh, live listings and um, very, uh, thousands of number of categories. So we have a big diversity of uh, items, categories, and consequently we have a diversity of item images. So we can see here the images of, it's a random selection of images of eBay, uh, which was, is being sold on eBay. And it's, it's quite uh, diverse. So we can, we can see that not just diversity of images, but diversity of image qualities. Um, so if you look a little bit of, of these pictures, we can see that so, uh, some of the pictures are very good and, uh, um, and something is, is quite clear what it is. Um, but some of the images, for example, here, they, they have watermark on them. And watermark is, is not good for advertising. So if, you use, uh, if your image has watermark, it can be blocked in some advertisement uh, platforms. And, and you cannot use these images um, in this case. So that's why uh, we, we really care for uh, image quality. And we, we would like to be able to filter the images by specific uh, quality parameters. So what it is, uh, we have so much diversity of images and so much uh, different stuff. And um, how can we even define what, what is good? What is good? Uh, let's look closer at one category. Um, it's uh, men fashion. And this category has several subcategories. So men fashion is t-shirts and maybe handbags and so on. What we see here is that um, most of the it uh, items, images here, uh, have white background. Um, in fact, every, everything here except this one um, have white background. Only. 
and it might be related with the fact that the, most of the items in this category are being sold by professional business to consumer B2C sellers, and um, most of the items in this category are new. Um, another thing we can uh, notice about this random selection of images is that um, sometimes we can see several objects on the same picture. It, um, sometimes sellers put um, several um, objects on the same picture to show that there are a variety of colors available. So from the consumer's perspective, it's very handy to know without clicking into um, uh, item specifics that something is available. And um, so it's a definitely a good feature. However, some advertising cases, uh, we've been uh, um, explicitly uh, asked to not to show such pictures because uh, that doesn't match their design. So these kind of things can be unacceptable for some of the advertising cases. Um, let's see another example, video games. What you can see here, um, there is kind of rarely we can see white background. And it's actually because most of the video games are being sold used and by C2C sellers, so by non-professional consumers. Uh, and that's why sometimes image quality is not so great, but uh, overall it, it doesn't matter for this category because that's how it is. And uh, for, for, for this category, uh, users like to see the actual state of the video game. And in the third example, cars. So it's very difficult to put car in a white background. So it's kind of uh, not, it's heavy. Um, and that's why you can actually never see a car on a white background. And uh, in, another thing, uh, yeah, cars are usually being sold used and by non-professional sellers. And there is, uh, so since it's non-professional sellers, there is not variety of cars. So we can always see one single car per picture. So what can we conclude here? So that uh, in different categories, there are different expectations, there are different characteristics. And um, uh, so for example, we can see that white background might be important for the fashion, but kind of irrelevant for cars and maybe not so much important for video games. So it's kind of hard to uh, define what could be the actual definition of image quality. Um, we, we rather need to think about it as a set of attributes and then adapt to a specific use case. So let's see our specific use case, which is the advertisement uh, in eBay partner network. What is the EPN? EPN uh, a website, any website, blog, or um, shopping comparison site can register in our eBay network and uh, advertise our eBay inventory on their sites. Um, when they advertise uh, in their blog or, or shopping comparison site, uh, our inventory, uh, they, you, they put images like this of the items which uh, lead to eBay. And um, once the users of this site click to these images, they land on the eBay page. And if a user purchase something, part of the revenue goes to the partner site. And um, some of the partner sites, they, they specialize on something. For example, this one is specialized on uh, fashion. And they have uh, sometimes specific uh, requirements for the images. Uh, in fashion, there is a strict requirements which kind of images are expected to be put. And, um, on the left, we can see the, how, how it looks on eBay. Yes, sometimes there is non-wide background. Sometimes there are multiple things. And there are uh, watermarks here. And that, that's the kind of features they don't want to see on their sites. So we need to uh, provide a framework for them to filter out our inventory, which will meet their uh, requirements. And without this framework, we, we could lose potential opportunities for partnership. And uh, yeah, uh, or if they agree to work with us, they, they, would, they would need to manually select um, images or inventory, which is not uh, good for them. So how do we do that? Um, we have all our images in some category, and somehow we need to 
magically uh, have only good ones. And considering that we have millions of millions of images and new ones every day, we need uh, some <coughs> machine learning approach to filter them. Uh, to solve this problem, we adopted few algorithms, few features, image quality features, uh, to filter out um, the images. The, these algorithms are, for example, white background, uh, where we detect if an image has white background or not. Not safe for work, so we detect nudity on, on the picture. Uh, watermark um, or promo text. Um, sometimes there is a, in the image they put watermark, uh, or logo, or promotional text, which is not um, good for advertisement. And also, we've de uh, developed an um, algorithm to detect um, multiple objects on the same picture. And uh, so, so the partners could uh, get only the images with one single object in it. For the items which don't have uh, color as an attribute, we, we extracted the color from the picture as well. So, color mapping algorithm. In this presentation, I will talk uh, about uh, three of these five algorithms. Uh, let's look at implementation. Um, image classification is typically a supervised algorithm, and uh, so the first step is obviously data collection for the training. But we don't have a labeled data, we, we have only images. So the, as a first step, for, for example, for the white background um, training data, where we need essentially two sets of images, one with white background, like this, and another set of uh, images without white background. We uh, developed a naive algorithm to somehow separate these images. So we, we counted the white pixels in the picture, and if it was more than some thresholds, uh, let's say 40%, we say, okay, if it's, there are 40% of pixels in the picture is white, we say it's uh, white background and else no. So of course it's not very precise algorithm, so we required some manual curation of the uh, data from this step. If you look at watermark model, where we, we need to have two, lab, two sets of images, one with, without watermark and another with watermark, which we also don't have originally, um, we, we label the all existing images as non-watermark images and forget that some of them are actually are. And then we augment the data by adding some random text on top of the image or random logos and in random places. So we could generate new set of images which would we call images with watermark. So in the fir uh, first use of the model, we use all this um, imperfect data set, but uh, in a second iteration, we could, uh, using this, this model, we could clean up this uh, training data set. Let's see how we do uh, uh, the modeling. Typically, image classification can be done using convolutional neural networks, where the first uh, part of the network would be responsible for feature extraction, and the second part would be responsible for classification and regression, where the, where we learn all, all the, based on the, all the features which we learned in the feature extraction layers, we can then in, infer our classes. But uh, building such models can take lots of time and uh, it's not an easy task and when you need to prove the concept of, uh, it's my, you might not have time to, to convince people to do this. So what you can do is uh, use pre-trained pre networks and uh, use the architecture and the weights of pre-trained networks uh, without changing them. And uh, the only thing you need to do is uh, retrain the last two layers, which are responsible for your particular task, classification or regression, and then um, uh, you can get the decent model uh, results. Um, so this concept called transfer learning. So uh, the feature extraction um, is, was done on different data set for different types of tasks. For example, you, if you use the ImageNet weights and the uh, Keras models, which uh, are trained on ImageNet, uh, these models are uh, used, uh, they were trained to detect uh, classes of uh, 
images, for example, cat, dog, mushroom, and so on. But while learning these classes, the, uh, they, they learned many, many features on this data set. So, and these features can be reused for our task, which is, has nothing to do with uh, um, these classes. So for white background, we can, um, we can put uh, our label data, two classes, white, white uh, images and non-white background images using pre-trained uh, network, and just retraining the last two layers. We can have a, a regressor which will uh, output a score as a probability of an image having white background. Once you complete this, once uh, these two, two layers are retrained, you can unfreeze those layers and retrain them. So it will uh, improve the performance. Um, so similarly, in watermark model, you can um, provide two uh, sets of images with watermark, with, without watermark, and then you will have a score, a probability of uh, image having watermark on it or not. Um, once you can filter um, images based on uh, white background and watermark, you can uh, quickly develop an algorithm which would count objects on the picture. And this is one example of our post-processing. Um, so um, we wanted to make sure that our images contain only one object. So this, we wanted to filter out the cases where there were several um, t-shirts on the same image. And this can be quickly done once we work with only clean data. So we could convert this to a grayscale, uh, then using thresholding mechanism, convert it into a binary representation. And once the picture is just zeros and ones, we can uh, find uh, found uh, connected components and label the regions. And then while uh, once we can label the regions, we can count them and ensure, uh, make sure there are only one object in the uh, image. And uh, uh, we, let me t uh, talk a bit about our infrastructure. Obviously, the image processing is kind of, uh, requires high computational power, but in eBay, we are lucky to have a Krylov, um, a cloud-based platform, and it was outsourced, uh, open sourced uh, recently. And in this platform, we can um, request resources by demand. We can design the configurations of the, uh, of the machines we can work on. We can use uh, GPUs, high memory, and so on. We can uh, install any uh, framework uh, we require. We have uh, Keras, TensorFlow, and Python, and so on installed. Uh, we can ingest um, data from our internal system, such as Hadoop and uh, Tira data, but as well, we can get data from outside if we need it. Um, yeah. um, to summarize what uh, we learned in this project, that uh, using the, uh, because of the diversity of uh, invent our inventory, classes, images, and, and use cases, there is no uh, single definition of image quality, but rather we can define it as a set of attributes, such as white background score, watermark score, blurriness score, not safe for work, and so on. And uh, in for implementation, we uh, used the 8 to 20 approach. So using quick development of the image attributes, uh, we used uh, transfer learning, which gave us decent accuracy, and it permitted us to uh, quickly develop a proof of concept uh, for our advertising partners, who previously didn't, didn't work with us. So thank you very much. When you were explaining on the part about detecting white background, you said that you were labeling automatically the images mm -hmm. by counting the number of white pixels. Yeah. So why did you just take this as your model? Because it was not good enough. The, it was quite um, bad. Uh, there were lots of cases where it didn't work good enough. And so that's why we required manually, manual curation. So we had to filter, to go through this manually for some corner cases to make sure we have more or less clean training uh, data set. How did you detect what were these corner cases? I mean, how do you know? 
visually by looking. Uh, and we also use the crowdsourcing. So we implemented a tool uh, to, so, for, so everybody uh, in our department could score images to, to say it was it white or was it not. And um, so provide a human feedback. What is the human thinks what is white background? Yeah, but, very good uh, question. Did you try it uh, just retrain the object detector to count objects? No, we, we use this simple approach. And indeed, yeah, very good question about the overlapping. We had overlapping <coughs> cases and nesting cases. So we, uh, I didn't uh, explain that. But we, there was a uh, second, uh, um, second part of algorithm where we would put back the borders. And then we would able to see that there are actually two objects, one and another. Um, and uh, yeah, and the third part of algorithm is to count nested uh, regions. For example, when uh, to, there were lots of false positive of the logo, uh, which would detect as a separate object, but we then said if it's nested, it's still one object. Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, thanks, speaker, again.